So we've had a lot of questions um, just regarding how we've been building our, our solar wax melters. Um, so basically we use uh, shutter ply or shutter board. So um, we, we like to use the 18 millimeter thick board um, and we just buy them in boards of 2.4 meters long by 1.2 meters high. Um, and that we can cut out everything that we need for our solar melter. So with regards to the size of your melter, that'll sort of depend on, on you, you know, what sort of capacity you want to go. Um, also, you know, depending on the, if you have, for example, you want to build one at home, um, you go on, the, on the, the, the size of the piece of glass that you have. So what you'd first do is you'd have a say if you already have a piece of glass you'd you'd first build your your door um, so what you do is you can choose a side if you just go with basic screw in hinges you can go two or even a third set if you want if it's a heavy piece of glass but this this is i think is a two millimeter thick glass not very thick um, and we decided just for wind and that kind of thing to put a latch on the side uh, and then your your melter will open like that um, and then it's always handy to have either uh, little uh, ropes or chains that hold the door from opening further than that obviously because of being glass you don't want it to fall open or whatever but um, you know it, it's not mounted on a pole at the moment so uh, the, this this melter has just been just been completed um, <clears throat> but yeah very important to have a latch for for wind and that kind of thing once it's outside so what we've done is we've planted a pole in the ground um, and so he has another melter. This is the back side of it, the underside. So your pole that's mounted in the ground sort of fits in here and then you can see your melter then will sit at this sort of angle. Um, and that uh, enables you to sort of pivot, turn your, your melter in the direction um, wherever the sun is. As the sun moves every hour or two you can. What we've done is We've decided on this on this um, newer model is we've angled the sides so it's not square down like the one on the previous video um, angle that just gives a lot more UV deflection inwards um, just have a it's hotter so you don't have to rely on those really hot days the oven itself still gets incredibly hot um, and yeah we, we just put a piece of of sort of welded mesh on the inside um, which sort of stops all your your uh, 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 um, solids and waste from going through you have a really nice clean wax going going to the pot inside this model also just has a lot bigger area so you can have a a bigger pot or a baking tray or whatever you want uh, to catch your wax depending on the quantities of wax you're putting so we've been melting uh, uh, combs um, that we've got from removals old halves or whatever the case and also um, wax cappings. Uh, cappings really make a really nice sort of foundation um, uh, for, for, for your other, other halves, a really nice clean wax. Um, and then what we've done is once we have finished the various sections of the half before we sheet it, we're sheeting it with aluminium sheeting, we are coating it with a uh, wax oil product which just keeps it um, uh, uh, um, sort of repels moisture and just helps helps keep it in a, a good condition that the, the board doesn't delaminate. So we like to use um, aluminium for the, the cladding of the inside. Um, it just has a really nice reflective property um, uh, and it's, it's obviously highly conductive for, for heat. Um, so we buy you know, in sheets like this. On the one side it's extremely reflective, on the other side it's got like an opaque tough finish but it bends very easily. Uh, you know, not like, like corrugated sheeting that you really have to struggle, you don't get your shape so easily. Um, yeah, and it's, it's fairly inexpensive, so that's what we like to use to clear the inside of, of the boxes. And also it cleans easily once, um, once you've melted things in there, the wax comes off pretty easily. Okay, so with regards to um, dimensions, um, for our framework, we just went on plus minus 50 millimeters, right round. 200 millimeters on depth and then it thickens to 400 at the bottom um, as you can see you have your slanted side so it goes 
ours went from 600 down to 500. You just have to make sure you, you leave enough space for yourself on the inside, like from where your wax melts. And we have just like a little flap just to, uh, so that the wax doesn't drip directly off the side. It sort of comes almost into the center of this bottom opening portion. So we went on about 300 millimeters wide by about 400 millimeters long, just so that if we wanted to put like a, 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 a bigger tray or a bigger pot wherever we wanted to catch the hot wax, um, everything has to be still. Um, otherwise it melts up on a really hot day. I suppose you can also use those um, silicon um, oven molds, like if you're making candles and that kind of thing, you can melt them straight into there from here. Um, that, that also works, it works quite well. The only uh, uh, um, sort of technical aspect I'd say is to, to seat your glass nicely so that you know it's not coming out. So what we did was we cut a groove into, into the frame of the door um, so where the glass seats in. So the glass is seated in between 15 and 20 mils right around the entire frame. So to, to do that, before you actually uh, assemble your frame, so we used uh, uh, just a standard table saw. We built a, uh, like, a, like a jig that fits over the blade and sort of holds in position and then you can adjust the projection of your blade, your 10, 15, 20 mils, however you want your glass to be seated in the frame. And for example, if this is your, your upright portion of your, fr of your uh, door frame, um, you, you run it in that in that groove and it basically when the machine is running it just cuts that groove out exactly on the center of your of your uh, frame and then you can uh, assemble say two sides or slot it over uh, and then it slots over the glass and then you can uh, fasten your corners with uh, screws and we use a bit of wood glue as well just to stiffen your whole door frame up and then you get a really nice sort of rigid door and you know your glass cannot come out of there. The size of the melter doesn't matter, it can be any size, just depending on the size of glass you want, the capacity. So this, the, the, the dimensions of, of this uh, uh, piece of glass is 1.2 meters long by 600 millimeters uh, wide. So we, we just used standard piece of glass, built the frame around it and then built the the melter box to fit. So whatever size glass you have, do your door first, build your box to fit. Super easy. Um, if you have any other questions just regarding um, a building of the melters, um, just let me know. I'm, I'm happy to, to uh, um, make more videos and just help you guys out wherever I can. Um, I'll also attach a link for the previous video which shows the, shows the melter actually in action working and what wax products we we well what what the what the the final melted wax product looks like uh, when it comes out of the melter but yeah thanks for watching and remember please guys uh like and subscribe helps us a lot thanks cheers